What's so, uh, Troy, I'm just wondering, what do you think is Patrick Jones' ceiling as far as his productivity going down in the future? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. I mean, I, I really think, Jerry, he's getting better every week. Um, so I still think there's room for him to grow. There's things we're working on uh, every day, you know, from a technique standpoint. So I still think his ceiling is higher. And, and I love, honestly, how coachable he is, um, how he really strains to get better. Uh, that, that's, that's why I still think he's got a ways to go in terms of um, what he's going to be able to accomplish this year. Now, on any given game, you know, what they do um, in terms of schematics and how much production he gets will certainly vary. But just in the level of his play, uh, it's exciting because he still has room to grow. What, what, uh, what's he like in the room with, with, the, with the other guys when you're watching, watching video? Yeah, he's really serious. Um, he's not a guy that, you know, a lot of guys – are looser in meeting uh, meeting time, you know, and uh, are, are you know have as much fun with each other, which is fine. I mean, we our, our meeting rooms are designed in a way where there's a lot of back and forth and a lot of conversation. But if if conversations that are happening go off track, um, the thing I can count Pat is so serious, he's quick to shut that down before uh, it, it becomes a distraction, which is which is great. He's he's extremely serious. He wants to be coached. Um, he's, he's fun to be around. He's operating at a really high level right now with regards to uh, his own personal development. Early on, Patrick, you know, I guess he had three sacks this past weekend. He had three sacks a couple of weeks ago. I remember even the, the Duke game last year, it seemed like he just popped off and was able to, you know, force a couple of fumbles. Is there just like a zone that he gets in in certain games? Obviously, he's just ta he's a talented guy. But is there a zone that sometimes he just clicks into and it's just kind of really difficult to stop him? Well, you know, I mean, there's so many factors, right? I mean, certainly there's there's games the guys are going to reach that zone that you're talking about, and he does tend to get into that zone at times. Sometimes it's what is the offense and what are they doing and how much are they willing to throw it? Um, are they willing to put him one-on-one -on -one at times, which – you know, with 17 on the other side and our guys inside doing a solid job of pressing the pocket, it gets harder uh, to double team one guy versus the other. Otherwise, they're getting into two and three man routes, um, you know, which, uh, you know, that, that, that certainly helps the back end also. Um, but there's no doubt it's a combination of him being in his own and, you know, what is the offense trying to do against us? I think about that Duke game last year, they were running pretty significant amount of one back, no tight ends and some empty stuff. Um, which put him in a one-on-one -on -one situation. And yeah, Jalen producing well at that time also. So it's a combination of a lot of factors, but uh, he's he's finding that zone weekly right now for without a doubt. Charlie, you hit on it. Obviously your neighbors have Watt and Dupree in, working in concert. How much yeah. is what his success is because of Weaver on the other side and vice versa? It's, it's a lot. It's, uh, you know, it's interesting. We had a chance to spend some time uh, with uh, those guys next door with uh, Coach Tomlin uh, just to talk about during the crazy time when we were all Zooming and just to talk some scheme and the conversation came up, hey, what are your, some of your favorite pass rush games, you know, which is when guys are twisting and things like that. And one of the things he said was to make sure I do everything I can to get, you know, Hayward and or Dupree and or Watt one-on-one -on -one opportunities. And there's no doubt that with those guys coming from either side, um, it, it really makes it uh, hard for other teams to double team because you can you can feel it, right? I mean, Weaver has a very productive game, and then Pat has one, and then there's a game where both of them are producing. Uh, there's no doubt that's having a huge impact, and also uh, our secondary. I mean, there's there's some things, you know, that great play that Weaver made where he took the ball. There were some things going on in the secondary that we're really proud of. There were some some things happening disguise wise that made him clutch it for an extra second. And we've obviously made a great play uh, when he pressed that tackle into him and took the ball. Um, but there were some things in the back end that's helping those guys also. Charlie, was that, <clears throat> excuse me, that Zoom conversation you said about talking about uh, when you were talking to the Steelers guys about Watt and Dupree and whatnot, was that with Tomlin or was that with? Uh, it was with Coach Tomlin, yep. Tomlin? Okay. Charlie, I want to ask you a guy about a guy who's been, I guess, pretty far on the radar, but got a little bit of playing time last week. DeAndre Jules, um, mm -hmm. we haven't seen him much of him at all. Just uh, what what have you seen from him that made him kind of the next guy in line to get that opportunity? You know, he's doing a great job in in practice, just in terms of getting. I mean, you know, coaches phrase three percent better each day. 
he's working really, really hard to not only do the right things, but to get uh, as far as, you know, his assignments, but he's working really hard on his technique and working really hard to finish drills and any given play at an extremely high level. Combination of those three things, if you're able to execute, play with some technique and play really, really hard, uh, you're going to be able to climb within our room. And uh, he's also blessed with some talent. So as he's put those three things uh, together at a little bit higher level, um, it got him the opportunity to get a handful of reps on Saturday. And what was fun for me was when he went in, you know, when I circled his number on our whiteboard on the sideline to really indicate that he was about to go in, uh, the, the true joy from the rest of the group for him to get out there and get an opportunity to play was, was fun to see because all the, all the guys in the room see how hard he's working also and got a chance to get out there on game day, which is fun for uh, our guys to see the, the young guys growing up, uh, you know, kind of behind them as they're having a good season. I assume he started the year uh, on the scout team. Was there anything that he did during that time that, that stood out to you? Well, you know, I mean, obviously I don't get a chance to see a ton of the scout team when they're down there going against our offense, but, um, you know, I get a chance to work with them during individual, you know, uh, uh, you know technique training periods, get a chance on some of the crossover stuff against our offense to see them. Um, but the compliments that he was getting from the offensive coaches on a daily basis uh, was was borderline overwhelming, talking about how hard he was working, um, you know, how, how hard he was to block. And it was it was getting, you know, more pronounced every single week. Uh, and, and then, you know, gave him a little couple opportunities in practice that he took advantage of. And they just kind of built from there. I'm proud of him because, again, you guys heard me say this a million times. He's doing a better job handling a business off the field. So he comes to practice with a clearer mind. I'm not, I'm not you know, on his case about being – uh, uh, out of whack with schedule or something like that. And then it's funny how that clears the, the smoke, so to speak, and allows him to, to be more productive in practice and then lead to an opportunity on game day. Charlie, are you looking forward to getting back down to, to South Florida? And obviously, you know, with the weird, uh, with COVID and the, you know, basically non-recruiting, you haven't been able to get down there, right? I'm assuming for for any scouting with prospects in a long time. Sure. I mean, it's it's my childhood home, right? I mean, I, I uh, always enjoy going back there. And, um, you know, I, I hate that I never got a chance to be a part of a game as a coach in the Orange Bowl, because that's what I grew up watching the Hurricanes be a part of. But, yeah, it's home. Um, you know, I'm I, not sure if I'm going to be able to see my dad because of everything going on. If, if I am able to see him, it'll probably be in the parking lot of the hotel at about 10 feet. Uh, but I hope I get a chance to see him. But yeah, it's always it's always great to get back to to my childhood home, uh, you know. And and I'm looking forward to playing the Hurricanes. Always look, I always look forward to this game. Charlie, are these are these developing back into the Hurricanes you remember as far as talent and, and speed and some of the things they have going on? Yeah, I I, I believe they are. And uh, you know, I'll give Manny a ton of credit. You know, I think Manny is doing a heck of a job of putting some things in play that make sense uh, for what they're able to recruit. I mean, they're, they're building their team on speed, right? I mean, they've done well defensively uh, in recent times. Um, and now they've got uh, Rhett there and Garen Justice, who uh, we work together at Florida Atlantic, their O-line coach, who does a great job with that O-line. But the, the tempo and the way they're getting the ball in the hands of guys on the edge with speed um, really fits what they're going to be able to build. And, and I think because of that, you're feeling the Hurricanes emerge as a team that uh, is going to be a power player nationally. Um, so I think Manny and those guys are doing a great job, and we have a tremendous challenge ahead of us on Saturday. Charlie, you've been a, been a head coach. What do you say to your kids when they're hit with two one-point losses two weeks in a row? You know, it's, it's every cliche you can imagine. I mean, the reality is cliches become so for a reason. Um, it's, it's, you know what I'm about to say. It's be where your feet are. It's one and oh, it's we got to put the last one behind us and focus on having a great Tuesday. I felt like the kids did that. Um, Sunday is always the toughest day because that's when you really put that game to rest. You put that game to bed um, and try and learn from what you see on film. And it's true, Jerry, as you know, I mean, to a big win, too. I mean, it's sometimes it's challenging putting a big win behind you. Um, but two one point losses are, are certainly challenging. But the best chance you have as an adult or as, as a young man coming through college is to just just be where you are. Just plant yourself here. Focus on what we're doing right now. Set all that stuff aside because 
if, if it's continually in your mind, then you're not going to be able to focus on what's happening and it's all going to just, you know, exponentially grow upon each other. Um, and I thought, I felt like the kids did a great job of that today. They came, I think we had a heck of a practice. So I'm excited about what we did today. And that's the best way is just focus on what is happening right in front of your face. Carly, I guess on that, how have you seen kind of this team, uh, you know, in, in the days after the game, you know, obviously he got you guys to overtime, but to come around uh, Kess, uh, given the kind of the ending of the game. Yeah, I, I tell you what, I was really, I went over to hug Kess um, when we got into the locker room. I didn't get a chance to get him after the game because of, you know, all that happens after a game. And then I went to seek him out in the locker room and it took me a while to get to him because the amount of our players that were hugging him, um, saying how much they believe in him, saying how much we have your back, um, that you didn't let us down uh, was, was striking. Um, I, I don't know that I've ever seen something to that degree in that moment, um, and, and Kess crushed the ball today in practice, right? So I think if I think it's gonna be a lot harder if those guys don't respond with that in the locker room the way they did, uh, then, then uh, if it had gone another route. I mean, it says a lot to, um, you know, the, the kind of kids we have in our locker room that they would back him after that. Uh, they understand that wasn't the only play um, that made the difference. You know, it's it's the way in a one point loss, it's you always hear coaches say one play, here, one play there, and you could say that on all three phases of the game. And when you walk in the locker room and see how passionately our kids were supporting Kess, you, you, you had a feeling that the majority of our football team uh, truly understood that any of the three phases could have had an impact that would have gotten us the victory. Any final questions for Coach? Yeah, sorry. On a different note, I meant to follow up on this earlier. Charlie, but... Okay. Um, with the South Florida guys, when, when you guys are going down to this game, are they kind of more excited? Do you get that sense at all that the guys on this roster are excited to go down and play, uh, go down and play Miami? Oh, without a, without a doubt. I mean, you guys have been around enough South Florida guys over the years to know the pride they take in this game, to know how many players they know on the opposite roster. Um, you know, on Sunday, we tend to wrap up our game and then we spend a little bit of time kind of talking a little bit about the personnel of the next opponent and listening to Kalaja fire off about all the different guys on the offense and what he knows about this guy and that guy and all those things. You can just feel his excitement on another level already on Sunday night. And that goes true for Weaver. It goes true for all those guys from down there. Um, but there, there's no question. Anytime you get a chance to go back to your home when it's that far away, um, it's a little different this year because of the whole you know, limited crowd in there, but I, I don't think it, it reduces the excitement very much because uh, you, you definitely feel those guys and their their pride uh, in South Florida and going to go back home and, and show something to their people and honestly show something to this opponent um, on, on, on Saturday afternoon against the Hurricanes.